Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Today, I am sitting down with two very, very special guests, newly minted 2021 Olympians for the UK. Today, we are sitting down with Speedo athlete Tom Dean and Finesse athlete James Guy. James, Tom, what's up, guys? How you good? We're good. All good. <laughs> hot from the 2021 British Olympic trials, uh, where you both qualified for the Olympic team, James, you were pre-qualified, uh, and, and Tom, you're, you're now an Olympian. Tom, I'll start with you. How'd you feel about your performances there and, and how's it feel to officially call yourself an Olympian? Yeah. I'm really happy with my performances, you know, three PBs, uh, in the four, the one and the two. Um, I feel like my four and one could have gone slightly differently, but I was still happy to get uh, a lifetime best and then really happy with my 200, you know, big drop down to that 144 mark uh, and a big chunk off my previous best. So really happy with the swims across the board uh, and yet yeah, a great honour to be picked for the team. It's just a case to get there, get the job done and, and just focus on the uh, the games now. I, mean, I, I have to ask about that 200 free, you know, heading in, especially after that, after the four and the one, like you said, you feel like they could have gone a little bit better, but still PBs. How were you feeling headed, heading into that 200 free and was was 144.5 even on the radar for you? Yeah, I mean, I knew I was on good form heading into that 200 because I'd done lifetime bests. Um, you know, the four and the one, it's kind of a case of four slightly too long for my stroke and the one slightly short for my stroke. Um, I'm okay at them both, but the two is really kind of the sweet spot for me um the training had been going so well you know the sets Jimmy and I had been doing in the lead up to it were just better than anything we'd done before so I knew something special was on the cards um I wasn't expecting a 144.5 uh you know I would have been happy with the 145 so um to make that drop I skipped straight past the 145 because my fever was 146 going into it um so really really happy with that drop um not on the cards but you know uh it was nice to make make that um make that time and yeah like I said it bodes well for the individual in the summer, but more than that, it bodes well for the, um, that relay that we've got coming up. And we're going to get to that relay in, in just a bit in all of our predictions. Uh, James, let's turn over to you. How, how did you feel about this trials heading in? Colin, just quickly, I said back on the podcast a while ago, I said, Tom Dean is going to drop and do something <laughs> serious. I said it to you. I said, he's, the way I sit him train, he's going to drop big. I called it back in October. And, that's, and it's happened. You know, I did say months ago it's going to happen. James knew this was going to happen. He said it. You can go back and listen. I remember it. You remember? should remember I it, it, viewers. I did say it. I did say <laughs> it. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, trials for me, it was, you know, kind of really weird because, you know, the tuna fly, um, it was a PB, first PB in four years. So a, a long time. Um, and the way I saw it was obviously the suicidal way of doing it, you know, you know, it was at 122.8, you know, that's that's quick at the 150 mark. Um, and I think, you know, if I changed that around a little bit, went out a bit, if I went a bit slower on the first 15, kind of control that a bit more, you know, I, I think I could definitely have dropped to 54 low 100% because I came back in 33.1, um, if not even quicker. So there's room to improve there, I think. But, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. I did feel like the way, I mean, my lactate was 19 after the turn of fly. Um, it was really, really high. Um, so I do think that kind of, it, it did really hurt me, I think for a few days after, and think I took out a little bit more than I, I thought it would do. 100 fly was the fastest I've been since 2018, uh, 51.4. Um, you know, went out really, really well, uh, but that's come back a bit quicker. So I know there's more room to drop there. Uh, I mean, I've, I'm always kind of the guy that kind of, you know, will swim pretty decent in April and then I'll usually drop quite a bit in summer. That's the way I've always swam the last, well, since I was nine, 18, 19, um, which, which is great. Um, and you know, the, my previous trials, I was 51.9. So, you know, fastest I've been at trials for a long time. Uh, well, fastest I've ever been at trials, I'm on the fly. Uh, two and a three, um, you know, I was more annoyed the fact that it was a 46.0 because I know, and I think everyone knows I'm a lot better than that. Um, you know, I was pretty much perfect again to 150. And, you know, I, I thought I was miles behind, went out too slow. It's just the fact that, you know, Tom and Duncan went out like absolute rockets, you know, and I was like, oh, my brother was watching it and he was like, oh, come on, Jim, pick it up. And I was like, hang on, he's just turning 50.8. He's not going out slow. 
um, you know, which was quite a surprise. But, you know, I think the way things are going, you know, it's, it's verification for me that what we're doing is working and the way obviously Tom swam and the group swam at Bath, you know, obviously me and Tom train together every single day, what we're doing is working. Um, and I think going into summer, it's going to be a great, you know, a great few weeks out there. That, I'm really glad you provided that context because uh, about the 200 fly, because we've seen this happen before in some races on an international level. Like, for example, I think a lot of people theorize that 2012 Olympics, Ryan Lochte goes four Oh five, nine in the 400. I am completely dominate at four or five, one, maybe the 400. I am completely dominates, but then doesn't really have the meat that he had expected from himself for the rest of the meet because everyone was like, I think he sold his soul a little there to, to, to go that, you know, you just, it, you take out those longer races so hard. And, um, on that tuner fly, did you, ex- was that the race plan just to go out and try to hang on? No, I mean, I think the race plan was just to try and, you know, swim it smart, you know, kind of just kind of build throughout the, the, out the 200, take it out, get into a nice com- comfortable rhythm. Like, you know, that, that, that kind of pop would you get when, when you taper and rest, you know, the, 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 fl- the stroke flows a lot more. Um, but no, the, the plan was never to go out in 24, five. It just, it, was, it wasn't, um, you know, that was at the same time as my tuna, as my tuna free, tuna free split. So, you know, the, t- the plan was just to kind of go out, see what I can do and just try and bring it back fast. But, you know, I didn't realize how much speed I had, you know, it's the first time I shaved properly in, you know, two years. So, yeah, you know, I didn't really expect that, but now I know kind of the main thing for me is that it's just, we know what I'm doing is working and that's a massive confidence booster. Um, but I think you're right, Colin, with this, the fact that you said Ryan Lochte, you know, he had an amazing 4 and IM back in the day. Um, and obviously, you know, they didn't have quite the meat he wanted to. He did. He obviously got, I think was it bronze or silver in the 200 bat, 200 IM, he got second or third. So, you know, that big race at the start, if you swim it, you know, if you swim it suicidally and really hard, I think it does take out a little bit of you. Um, but, you know, I'm excited for the boys who are leading the 203 and I can't wait for summer, but I won't be doing the 200 fly at the games. Just putting out that out there. Yeah. <laughs> so th- that is exciting. Uh, and like you said, first, first shave in almost two years, first proper big meet. What was it like just getting those jitters again and getting that energy of like, all right, this is, this is really go time now. Um, it, it was weird because, you know, you got, you got to remember, like, obviously, in the crowd, there's no one there. There was just, it was just swimmers and, you know, the London Olympic pool is massive. It's like 17, it's like, I don't know, about 10,000 maybe, I'm not too sure. Um, so previously, we obviously raced twice in Manchester a few times, but having no crowd there, you know, London's a big pool. There's, you're walking out, there's no noise. So you've got to be prepared mentally for that. Um, but, you know, it's nice to have the pre-race jitters, you know, you've got that burden of making a trials and making a qualifying time. Um, you know, I love the pressure. I love being under that. And I think even though I think at the bigger meets, it's preparing you better because, you know, you're racing the Europeans, the Australians, Americans, and I think it's, it's a good, it's a good stepping stone. Yeah. Tom, same thing. Just what was it like for you to be at the trials again, especially knowing that this time you are a real contender to make that team. Um, and for, for, for your first really big meet in quite a while. Yeah, I mean, like Jim said, the fact there are no spectators, no crowd, even the swimmers weren't allowed to go and watch, you know, was really wow. surreal. You could have heard a pin drop on some of those finals. It was that quiet. So you kind of had to put that to the side of your mind a little bit and still remind yourself how big this race was and um, the taper that we did lined up perfectly. And, and you know, when you get tapered and you get fresh, you just get excited about racing. And I think, you know, despite that, look at the ISL with no crowd and still produce some electric swims. And I think, you know, when you bring together the best in the UK, um, everyone tapered, everyone ready to go and hit it hard, then it's going to be pretty special. Um, And I think that was the case at trials. So even though we didn't have a a kind of conventional trials, I think it was still pretty exciting. And I mean, I think the swims kind of speak for themselves. I I would, I would wholeheartedly agree. It it seems like the swims speak for themselves. It, it certainly got everyone around us excited about dude Britain, Britain's looking good these relays are going to be awesome come come uh, sorry come August July come Olympics um <laughs> but before that you know and this is from an American perspective but for you all before that you've got European championships coming up which is a bit of a of a weird meet it's it's an interesting timing just because it is in two or three weeks in the middle of May um so Tom, we can start with you. For you, where does this meet kind of fall in terms of focus and training? 
yeah, it is a little bit of a strange meet um, so soon after the trials. But I think for us as a country, we're looking to just bounce on from the trials and carry those good performances through. Um, I think that's the main focus. And then I think we've got about, I think, 10 weeks after the Europeans when we when we kind of step on the blocks in Tokyo. So that's on a big block of hard work or really follow. But um, yeah, I think we're just there to recreate some kind of really good performances from the trials and stamp our name um as as a country on the european stage with some with some great results and hopefully some some great medals as well and and james just same question what you know for someone who's who's done this for quite a while and been to quite a few european championships yourself what what do you feel like this uh this pre-olympic euros does um you know i think compared to what the last one made before rio you know it was a completely different scenario because you know last time we were in heavy work you know, I didn't take it seriously at all. I mean, I remember I wore skimpies for the former three heats, um, just a, a training brief. Um, you know, I, I was like, oh, I don't really care kind of thing. It's, it's about being heavy work, about the Olympic Games. But then obviously a lot of the country shaves. So, you know, I remember I think Laszlo at 152, something in the Tuna Fly. I mean, that would have won the, the Rio Tuna Fly final. Um, so, you know, I think for some people it's different, but I think for mainly the Brits, it's about, about like, like Tom said, bouncing on, you know, it's going to be interesting because I think our coach said to us, we're not going to put you into kind of that heavy hole of work because why would you want to go there and come, you know, 11th, 12th in heavy work when you can just, we can kind of still work you quite hard, um, but still race really, really well because, you know, we want to get that massive anaerobic hit, hit out there because we haven't raced against people since, you know, the ISL or especially long course since, since well, since 2019. So, you know, trying to ideally bounce on from the Europeans and, you know, kind of get that momentum going and then obviously work hard and, and shave for the games properly. Yeah. And I mean, so it does seem like a good stepping stone because I, I didn't realize this until you guys were talking about it, but it's like you have the national meet uh, and then you have the continental meet, you know, a, a month or so later, and then you have the, the, the big, big international. Yeah. Um, is do you guys consider it like that? And do you feel like that is kind of a nice stepping stone to have where as everyone who's not European doesn't quite have that? Um, I think, you know, that's a good way of putting it, but you know, for me, it's just kind of trying to match what I did at the trials, or if not go a bit quicker. Um, I know there's room to improve on a few things, um, but you know, I've never done, I've got never gone to a meet and done a clean 200 free before same as to, to Tom before. You know, when I, when I won the Worlds and did a few things like, you know, I'd, I've never done a, a fresh 200 free ever. It's always had the 400 free before it or relay before it. Um, you know, obviously there's relay again and obviously the same for the game. So I'm excited for that, but it's going to be different. I'm only going to swim the 100 fly there and obviously 200 free in the relay. So my mindset's completely changing, but, you know, I want to go there, race, race some of my friends, you know, and just, and just enjoy being in a bubble again and racing the best in Europe and, for me, it'll kind of put me in a good headspace for the games, knowing that everything's working again. And, you know, being out there with the guys, it'll be a good fun. And Tom, just kind of the same thing. What are you kind of going in there and expecting, especially because you've got that progression going? Yeah, I mean, like you said, the Olympics is the big one. That's the, the pinnacle of the four years. So Europeans is very much a stepping stone uh, on the journey towards that. Um, yeah, like I said, we want to recreate the good performances we had at trials uh, and just like what Jim said, do as good, if not better, if we can, because then the medals will just come our way and the results will follow. Um, but yeah, I mean, being able to gauge the continent and see where they're at, obviously, normally we'd have uh, the Mayor Nostrums and Seti Colley, which are kind of quick meets in their own right, but they're not a Europeans where um, there's as much weight behind them. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where the rest of the European countries are at the moment and um, obviously everyone with different preparations leading into it. But yeah, if we can carry the same results through from the trials, then um, the medals will follow. I'm, I'm sure of that. And, you know, speaking of medals, uh, we have to talk about these British relays um, heading into European championships and the Olympic games because they're looking hot, man. Uh, and I want to start with the four by one free relay um because that's that's a really interesting one for you guys it's really on the rise last year sorry two years ago now at 2019 worlds you guys qualified out of prelim second ended up getting fifth but you kind of shocked everyone of like whoa but you know this is this this relay could could be legit and now you have a lot of young guns really on the rise and, and looking really strong um so tom 
for for you, what are your thoughts on this four by one relay heading into Euros and then those Olympic Games? Yeah, I think like you said, the the four by one has never been the biggest relay for GB and never been the main main focus uh, in the UK. But the result in Guangzhou was a real surprise, and I think it was a real positive surprise and showed that we you know have got some some big powerhouses on that hundred free. Um, I think that was shown again in trials. Um, obviously, Duncan uh, is the fastest in the country when it comes to his 100 free, and he's done some insane relay splits on 100 free, um, especially on that medley relay back in 2019. So I think it's really exciting going forward. Um, obviously, Jim's swum on that 4 by one many times, but I've tried to throw my name into the hat as well. Um, you know, my, my swimmer trials was... A PB, I was quite happy with it, but I think there's definitely more to come. Um, I like to think I can make a drop um, moving towards games. Uh, And yeah, like you said, we've got a bunch of young guys coming through um, who are also kind of putting their names in the hat. So I think it could be really exciting. And I think it's definitely one to kind of keep an eye out for uh, at the games. And Jimmy, same thing. Um, You know, what are your thoughts on that four by one? And are you going to try to throw your hat? Sorry, your name in the hat. Um, especially after not having swam the hundred free individually at trials. Um, yeah, man, I think right now, right now, my name, you know, isn't on the team for that relay um, because I also haven't done it in so long. But like they know, I've been fully seven seven in Grand Dew. Um, you know, I wasn't in the greatest of shapes there. I know that, so I know I can go quicker than that, which which is cool. Um, but, you know, I, I would love to, to be part of it because I think you know it's it's a good opening opening point for my for the start of, of the um, of the Europeans and the games because uh, it, it's the first race for me at the Olympics so um, I don't but like Tom knows that I don't do much 100 free work in the pool I don't really do it it's always the 100 fly stuff um, but you know I think if we've got a chance to get in a medal then 100% but I don't want to do it if we're going to come you know if we're going to be fighting for sixth and seventh because I think you know we're wasting energy but if we could tackle that and put something else into it and you know we've got a real chance of a medal which we do then I'd love to be a part of it um, but I don't want it to disrupt, to disrupt, you know, anyone else's chance of, you know, having a good individual swim. If uh, we're going to put in a relay, that's not going to challenge the medals. I think that's the focus that I've got in my head. Um, but I do think we've got a good chance of, you know, doing really well at the Europeans. You know, we've shown that out of the trials. We've got Jacob Whittle, Matt Richards, who's trying really well, Dino, Duncan, um, Joe Litchfield. You know, I can do it. So there's, there's six or seven lads there who've got a really good chance of, you know, doing the business. Um, how they decide the team, I don't know what they're going to do um, because I haven't done it in so long. But, you know, it, it is showing that the 4 by one free was never, as like Tom said, a British contending relay. You know, it's always been the 4 by 2 and the medley relay. Um, but no, I think we can progress that and obviously onto the games as well. I think depending on, dependent on um, Euro- Europeans, like we know Russia and the USA, they're like, they're, they're, they're going to be right up there. Um, so the third spot is, is literally wide open. So, you know, there's definitely a chance of fighting for medals in there. So, you know, I think if we can see that on paper and do it at Europeans, then I want to be a part of it. Yeah. And can you can you give a little bit of context? We talked to Duncan about this just the other day, but um, just what it meant to British swimming to get that 400 free relay into the not only into the final at Worlds, but, you know, into a lane five. You were you guys were right in the thick of it uh, for that relay. Yeah, I mean, you got you got to remember, right? Britain has got sixty five million people, something like that. You know, we're a tiny little country. You look at the size of America. You know, the depth they've got in the in the event of the hundred free event. You know, it's unbelievable. You know, we've got five boys here who were, you know, one of them is under 40, 48, and a few of them on forty eight low. Um, you know, forty eight low is is kind of the normal America, the norm in America. So. To be part of that team and just to go 47-7 and, be, and going in second to the final of the 4 by one three, Britain's never done that before. We've never, we've never challenged or, you know, we've always kind of been like lane eight, lane one, like just doing okay, going 49 splits. Um, but to actually kind of stamp our ground thinking, oh God, like, you know, we've actually done a, a very well here. Like Ben Proud is a 50 freestyler. I don't do the 100 free. You know, Scott does and Duncan does, but we're not specialised 100 freestylers. So, you know, it shows that we, we, we can do the event. We are strong and we're only going to get stronger because the guys who are coming through are only going to get quicker. So it's exciting for us. And I think, you know, to get fifth at the Worlds when none of us even do the event apart from two of the boys, you know, it's not bad. And, and either of you can comment on this if you want, but it, it does seem like 
that had a ripple effect, like you said, because in 2019, you know, yeah, half half the team at least not really hundred freestylers. Dunk when when Duncan was giving his analysis, he he was even like, I do the hundred free, but it's not really my focus and my main focus in training. Um, but you see these young guys like uh, Matt Richards, Jacob Whittle coming up the ranks, and and it seems like they are putting a higher emphasis on that hundred freestyle. Uh, maybe in part because they've seen, hey, hey, Britain can really do this. Maybe, maybe I should put a little more stock in this one. Uh, I, you know, if, it's interesting because you know, obviously, I see that every day. I don't see Jacob that often, um, but you know, I think Matt's always had a good focus in the under three hundred, two hundred three of holy specialized events. Duncan can do anything. We know that. I think Dino's focus is at two hundred and four hundred. So, you know, I think there's still only like there's no real specialized hundred freestylers, probably apart from Jacob, who still who can who still does a fifty, hundred, and two hundred. Um, so, you know, it's just kind of getting a group of guys together who can do a hundred free really well. Um, and get doing the business, but you don't get a group of guys who are specialized, specialized 100 freestylers. You just, we just don't have that. So, you know, to be part of that team is, is pretty special, but it's going to be exciting. I think them, you know, them young lads are going to push us a little bit more on that 100 free. Um, but, you know, it's great to be part of that. And I think, you know, it's going to go well in the future. I think it will we, we'll, we'll do well. Tom, any thoughts on those young guys rising through the ranks in the 100 free? Yeah, I think, like you said, um, maybe a few more young guys are starting to look at it and wanting to get kind of get in on it. I think the four by two has always been so strong in the country that everyone wants to get a kind of uh, a piece of it and a slice of the cake and stuff like that. Everyone wants wants a bit of that because it is so strong. And, you know, if you're on that relay, you've got a real good hope for medals. Um, so that's always been a real big strength. But yeah, like you said, with these young guys coming through on that 100 free, Matt, Jacob, not only does it bode well for the summer, but it bodes well for the next three years as well and, and, and looking towards Paris because that's when these guys will be kind of coming into their prime. So it's exciting at the moment, but it also just looks really, uh, really good for the future. And, and maybe we'll have, um, you know, all three relays uh, starting to look a bit more exciting at the games. That, that's what I'm hoping for because you guys are looking electric right now. I'm, <laughs> I'm secretly team britain but you know on, <laughs> onto the onto that four oh, by two, as you mentioned. <laughs> on, onto that four by two as you mentioned i mean just after the trials you guys are obviously a heavy favorite uh two-time world champions in 15 and 17 olympic medalists in 16 um you know what what are you guys thinking there in terms of how, how you you've been world champions uh 2019 was an off year for that relay though you know, how, how are you going to make it Olympic champions? Um, you know, it's a great question. Um, but right now, we know that obviously America and you, America, America and Australia have their trials coming up, and we know they're going to drop big. Um, but I think, you know, looking at the time we did, we did at the trials, you know, I've been on this. I've been on the relay since 2013, since, since I was 17. So it'd be almost 10 years, you know, and I've carried kind of carried the flag a little bit now and I've kind of brought it back and, you know, the run down in 15 and 17, you know, now it's, now it's time for these boys to take it on a little bit. Um, and I'm so happy that, you know, we've got Duncan and, and Dino to do that because um, the 203 has moved on. And, you know, I think my time as the, the main anchor man has gone, I think, but, you know, to be part of that four by two, the way we're looking right now, you know, we had two 144s in, 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 in April and it's good to see that the tuna freeze moved on. You know, I don't think we've seen that since, you know, 2011, um, when obviously the, the Shanghai World Final, and I was 15 at that point, you know, I remember watching it and I'm thinking, oh my God, like Ryan smoked this tuna free. Um, but it's good to see that we know we can improve on that. We know we can go faster. Um, we know that I'm good in a relay. I, I've never let the team down apart from, I think, Grandjean World, Grand World when I was absolutely goose from my home to fly. I had nothing left in me. Um, so it is exciting and we know that, you know, obviously the main threats are going to be USA, Russia and Australia. Um, I think they're going to be the, the, the main kind of three competitors, but I'm excited for it. You know, I think the way the way we're looking at the minute, the way we've swam, it's it's going to be really good in the summer. Um, and to be part of that four by two, you know, obviously winning the Worlds in 2015, it was so expected to beat the to beat you guys and obviously 17. You know, I never thought that we'd win that as well, being, you know, quite far behind. Um but to be part of it and be, and be part of history is pretty cool. Hopefully we can go the the one more and get the get the nice goal. But you know, you know the, the 
at the end of the day, you can't think about what you want to win and it's think how you're going to get there and the process of how you're going to swim the race. And I think that's really, really important not to get ahead of ourselves and focus on day to day of how we can make our times better. And when it comes down to the race and, you know, it's the four lads who are doing it, it's, it's thinking how can each, each lad have the best swim of their life to, to be the best for the team. And that's when the results come, I think. Tom, thoughts? Uh, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Jimmy's speaking with a lot more experience about this relay than, than I possibly can. Um, like you said, being on the team for so long, I was fortunate enough to get my first call up in 2018 for the Europeans um, when we won gold. And that was a real shock. But yeah, I mean, like Jimmy said, I think the team we've got at the moment is um, the strongest it's been for a while. I like to think, I mean, um, if you just look purely based on the times from the trials, um, the cumulative times um, are, are kind of, yeah, really, really exciting. And I think they bode really well. If you look at Rio, for example, when, when the silver was secured, um, I think the times have moved on since then. Even since Guangzhou, I mean, we were, what, two tenths of a second off, off, a, off a silver medal there. And I split a 146-1 there from a relay takeover. Terrible. And I, Absolutely I, yeah, terrible. Not, not world competing. It's your fault it's not, I became fifth, it's not, mate. Oh, <laughs> it's, not, <laughs> it's, not, it's not world level, that, that kind of what time. Did what, what, have you, what have you split on that? Oh, mate, I was out like a 50.6. I was out like a shot. I thought I was going to like set the world on fire. I was only like 18 at the time. And I thought I was, you know, going to do this amazing time. I, you know, caught the dart on the way back and just came back in a body bag. What did, but, I, what did um, I say to you before? Was it the Europeans or was it the World Oh, like, yeah. They don't F this up. <laughs> yeah, right before my first, my first team ever, my first call up. I've never <laughs> been on a team with these guys before and I get told that before walking out for the final. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, yeah, 146-1 in a relay. From a relay takeover, is just not good enough, but... The fact that I've gone on 144.5 from a flat start now, you know, moved it on by over a second and a half, and we were two tenths of a second off a silver at Worlds. I mean, I think that kind of speaks for itself because it's not just me who's moved it on, it's all of the four guys. Um, I think that combined with, um, you know, the excitement and, and, and Duncan moving it on, and, and obviously Matt coming in with a great 145 at trials. But on top of that, obviously, Jimmy with the experience of anchor anchoring that relay I mean time after time it takes a lot to be able to step up on the block as the fourth leg of, of a relay that's kind of often comes down to the line you know great relay split of 143 in his own right so I think you know if the stars align we could really do something special in the summer it's, it, so I have to ask or I have to, I have to make a comment and then ask a question uh, it, for the 4 by 2 free relay especially I don't, and this isn't directed at, at anyone specifically. I think this is just a rule of thumb. I don't think it matters what you've been flat start, right? I mean, you can, you could have gone anything. And in that moment on that relay, uh, it matters, it matters how you step up in, in the moment, right? Uh, because we've seen guys go huge PBs from, from, from a swing. I think, I feel like Mac Horton, there's no way he's been faster than 147. He anchored in 144 in Guangzhou, right? And so, so what is the key to having a good four by 200 free relay leg? Uh, you know, I mean, do you go out fast and try to hold on? Do you have to swim a smart race? Uh, do you use the adrenaline to just get up and go? I mean, for you guys, what do you feel like the key is to, to be able to perform in that moment? Um, you know, I think whenever I've anchored the relay um, or been on the relay team with the boys, it's always been about just enjoying it and having no pressure on it um, and always swim it smart. I remember when I was with Joel at Millfield and you and Dale, we always said just swim the relay smart and don't get carried away the first 50. The, key, the one thing you want to do is go out like an absolute rocket and die. And that's what happens. Like it's not a hundred, it's a 200. Like you get to hundred meters and your legs have gone and you've got nothing left. Like, but whenever I've done it and, you know, anchored the team to a nice win or, you know, had a good solid swim, you know, it's all been about just swimming it smart and don't be stupid. Um, even with the 143, I was out 49.7, but, you know, I think because I was in great shape there, the 49.7, like Townley's done a 43.7 as well, you know, and we went out really, 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 really quick, but it wasn't hard. It didn't feel that hard because I think emotionally we were, we were really up there. You know, the adrenaline was really, really high. And we just let, we, we just let our, flokes, our, our stroke flow. And I think when you're more relaxed, like looking back at it, I can I watch it, you know, I've watched it a few times and looking back at that stroke, like it was just flowing and flowing and flowing. 
And I, I was, I think I was 23, seven, 49, eight, you know, I, I was hardly even trying. So it just shows you that when you've got that adrenaline and the emotions there and the crowd's roaring, you know, and you assume it's smart and you're relaxed, you know, good things can happen. Like look at Mac, you know, he's definitely not tuna freestyle. He's a great mate of mine. He's an amazing former freestyler. Um, but you know, when he's ready to go and he's, and he's put under pressure, he can deliver a good, a good, a well, good tuna free from a takeover. I've raced since raced him since 2013 world juniors. And we were head to head, the last, the last anchor. And I think I beat him, which is quite nice, but you know, you, <laughs> It's about being composed, not losing your head and just something smart. Um, and that's the way I think, you know, that's the way I've always done it. And it seemed to have kind of always worked. Tom? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, like I said, again, Jim's been on a lot more 4 by 2s than I've been on. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I like to think I can learn from a Grand Dew swim. And like Jim said, not taking out like an absolute rocket um, and letting the um, emotions of the moment kind of get the best of you. I think you do have to swim a smart race um, because there is so much adrenaline and so much hype around it. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, when you're feeling good and you, you get to take over from a relay start, you know, that, that rolling start, you can just float times in that first 100 that you would never normally be able to do from a flat start. So it's so many external factors that can, that can kind of play a part in allowing blokes to swim times that they would never be able to swim. Like you said, way quicker than anything they can possibly imagine from a flat start. So it's, it's as much psychological as it is physical, I think. Uh, but yeah, you definitely have to swim, swim a smart swim and, and, and kind of take the whole uh, environment into, into consideration. It's wise words from two wise swimmers. Uh, but Tom, James, it's always such a pleasure talking to you guys. And I can't wait to see what you guys have in store uh, for the swimming community in the next couple of months. Any parting thoughts for our audience before we sign off here today? Um, I was going to say, I told you all you go fast and he's done it. <laughs> I told you all he do it, you know, and, you know, it's glad we've got, you know, I said this before when I, when obviously I saw the result, I'm like, you know, being, being like number one and two for the tuna freestyle for a long time since, well, 2013 and the, the, the title's going to Duncan and Dino, you know, if I want to get a beat, that's the way I do it. Just get absolutely hammered and go 144 mid, you know, and it's nice for that, you know, two young lads who are good boys, um, to take the title and actually do the, to, to do GB Proud and, you know, finally got a bit of pressure off my back now, which is quite nice. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like Jim said, it's exciting the times that dropped the trials and I think, yeah, just keep an eye out for GB because special things are going to come uh, in Tokyo, I'm sure of that. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swim Podcasts on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.